Now to make our ActionScript window a little bit easier to work with, let's also take a quick look at the preferences for that window. I'm going to close up the output window. And to access preferences on the Windows machine, I'll just go over to the Edit menu and Preferences located right at the bottom. On the Mac, of course, that would be under the Flash Program menu, and you just access Preferences. You notice ActionScript has its own panel right here, and a lot of the preferences that we're seeing here have to do with how the ActionScript is typed in the window. Now, since we're going to be working with a lot of text, things like font, size, and color are actually going to be very important to us. Let me just move this Preferences window out of the way a little bit, and we can just see how the text is being typed in the window as is. Now, Flash always chooses the Courier font as a default font for this window. But it's going to actually become very important to be able to distinguish characters inside this window to make sure we're typing the right thing. So just to make things a little bit easier to read, I'm going to choose a different font. You can choose any font you'd like. And coincidentally, this will be the same font used if you were to print this script out if you ever need it for reference. I'm just going to choose Verdana. And while I'm here, I'm also going to make a quick change to some of the coloring at the bottom. Now we can already see that the ActionScript window is using color on some of the elements that we've typed in, specifically the trace statement and the message that we put inside the trace statement. Over in the Preferences panel, the trace statement is what's being referred to as an identifier. It's actually a function name, and we'll be talking about functions a lot more in the course later. The green represents a string, and that's a short way of saying a literal string. Basically, in these areas, this is the exact message and characters that I wanted to appear in the trace window. So we surrounded it by quotation marks, and that's representing a string in the program. We'll also be talking about strings later as well. Now, one thing I like to do in my preferences is I like to separate the identifiers and the keywords by color. You can see they've both been set to a blue, and I'm just going to take the keywords one and change it off to, let's say, a dark red. Now, with these settings, anytime we're using a keyword in the program, we should see it appear in red in the screen. You'll also notice that our comments are defaulted to show gray. So as we're typing a comment, as soon as the action window recognizes this by us typing either two slashes or a slash star, you'll notice that the text automatically turns gray. This color hinting can be a really big help to you if you get used to it in the program, because it can basically tell you if you're typing the right thing or not. I'll leave those two changes, click OK, and we can see a little bit easier to read our window now. We also can distinctly see the beginning and the ending of the parentheses, and that's going to be important because our next subject is going to be syntax. Now, in general, syntax means, did you type the line correctly? The ActionScript window has a built-in syntax checker that you can use anytime you'd like just to make sure that you're typing things incorrectly, and that's the blue check mark up here at the top. If you just click it, it'll scan through your code, and it'll tell you if you've got any errors. Now, because it's important to see how this error system is going to work, let's create an error. One syntax error that I can create in the program is whenever you open up a set of parentheses, it's going to try to make sure that you close it. So if I leave off one of these two parentheses someplace, let's say I take the beginning one off the trace statement off, let's check our syntax now. You'll notice that the program's caught an error even before we've had a chance to run our program. I get an alert box that says the script contains errors, and very importantly, the output panel comes up and gives us some information about what the error is that we've got. Let me click OK on this panel here. The first line here describes exactly where in the program is the action that's causing the problem. Now, so far, we've only created actions in our actions layer on frame one. And you can see it's pointing us to scene one, layer actions, frame one, and it even tells us line seven. You can see right down here, it's pointing right to the line we had the problem in. It'll also give you some information about it. This one simply says syntax error. But you can get some more descriptive lines that'll point you to what's wrong with the line of code that it's pointing to. 